Hello and welcome to my video today. This is going to be a video about the fuse boxes and fuses in the Fisker Ocean. I'm going to go over some of the differences between left hand drive and right hand drive and then go into showing you the spreadsheet that I've been working on. So let's get started. This is a chart of the left hand drive wiring. Under the hood, there are two fuse boxes. One is right next to the 12 volt battery. The other one is called the power compartment fuse box. And that's kind of in the center left of the vehicle under the hood there. Inside the car, there is the cabin fuse box, which is right to the left of the driver in that steering wheel area. And finally, the last fuse box is in the cargo area on the right side. Now I'm going to show you the right hand drive wiring. Under the hood, the first fuse box is also right next to the 12 volt battery, except the 12 volt battery is on the left side of the vehicle instead of the right side. However, the power compartment fuse box is in the same place on the left side. Inside the car, the cabin fuse box is on the right side of the car where the steering wheel is, as opposed to the left-hand drive vehicles. And finally, the cargo area fuse box is in the same location. It's in the right side of the trunk. So I hope that gives you a good idea of where these fuse boxes are located in the vehicle. Now I've opened up the spreadsheet and I have it organized into four different sections. There's a tab for each of the fuse boxes. So for example, let's start with the first one, which is the low voltage battery fuse box that's under the hood. There are different columns here. I'm going to show you what those mean. The first one is installed, which means is there a fuse in there or not? So yes, if there is, no, if there isn't. And if there's any differences between what I have in my vehicle and what is in the manual, I usually have that listed in this column too. Next we have fuse, which is the fuse number or name. For example, here we have MFO1 through MFO6. The next column we have is type, which is the type of fuse. In this one, there's only the one mini fuse. The others are very high amp fuses. For example, 60 amps all the way up to 300 amps. The usage column is the name that the user manual gives to that fuse. Sometimes they're a little on the acronym side and hard to understand. So I also have another column called meaning where I expand on what they mean. For example, iBooster is the electric brake booster. IBS is the intelligent battery sensor. Just to make things easier to understand. And if you're searching for a particular fuse by name or item, you can do a search on the spreadsheet with that name and that will help you find which fuse box it's in and also which particular fuse it is. Then I have a diagram that's from the manual showing the fuse box and then I have a photo from my car. So pretty much all these tabs follow the same format. One thing I want to mention about this fuse box that's basically on top of the 12 volt battery on the positive bus bar is that leads to the other fuse boxes. For example, MFO1 goes to the rear trunk fuse box. MFO3 goes to the power unit compartment fuse box. MFO4 goes to the passenger compartment fuse box. And then there's some other major components of the drivetrain, such as the iBooster and the PDU DC-DC distribution. And lastly, IBS, which controls the 12 volt battery. So if you ever need to replace the 12 volt battery, you may need to pull out this fuse 
and let it reset so that the car knows that a new battery has been installed. There's a couple different ways of doing it and I'll probably do a separate video on that someday for more information. Let's go to the next tab, which is the power unit compartment fuse box, which is also under the hood. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just want to point out that on the installed column right here, I have a couple of these that are highlighted in yellow. I've done the highlighting if the fuse is different in my car than what the manual is showing. For example, in EF05, it's supposed to be a 40 amp fuse, but in my car, it's a 30 amp fuse. Not sure if that's everybody's cars like that or just mine. So I want to point these out. It's probably a good idea to check your car and see if all the fuses are also installed. Because if there's any missing fuses, that may ex explain why some things aren't working in the car. For example, in the suspension control module, which I don't think we have in the vehicle, there's no fuse in there. For the siren, it says that there's a 10 amp fuse, but mine only had a 7.5 amp fuse. And by the way, that is the fuse that you would pull if you want to cut off the alarm siren. So I'm going to scroll down here some more and here is the diagram for the fuse box and also what's under the hood on my car. I also want to point out that in the fuse column, there's not only just fuses in there, but there's also relays. For example, these large modules right here are relays and they usually are controlled by a particular fuse that's in here but it may be possible that a relay may die and you may need to replace it. So that's also listed in here. And I also want to mention that there's different types of fuses in the car. For example, the first fuse box that was next to the battery had a mini fuse, but in this fuse box, we also have J case fuses as well as the mini fuses. And like I mentioned, the relays. Let's go to the inside of the car. We have the passenger compartment fuse box. This is one of the biggest fuse boxes with the most number of fuses and relays. Unfortunately, it is kind of hard to get to. I do have a video that shows you the process. So if you ever need to do the T-box reset with the fuse, there's a video for that. Going through here, it's pretty much the same. I have all the different columns for the different fuses, their usage and their meaning. So I'm going to scroll through that. And at the bottom, just like the other tabs, I have the diagram from the manual and a photo from my car. Let's go to the last fuse box, which is the trunk or cargo area fuse box. And like I mentioned, there are different types of fuses in here. For example, instead of mini, this fuse box has micro fuses and M case fuses. So there are one, two, three, four, five different types of fuses in the vehicle. So I suggest getting a box of replacement fuses. I have the links in the video description. Just in case you ever have a fuse go, might as well have some extra ones in the car. And these kits that have multiple sizes and multiple amps of fuses is probably handy to have since there are so many in the vehicle. And one thing I want to mention about the cabin fuse box and the trunk fuse box is that they both control a lot of items that are inside the vehicle, such as the rear fuse box here has the window controls. It also has the lift gate module, has anti-pinch for the windows, also has the front and rear seat controls. Scroll down to the bottom. Here is a diagram from the manual and here is the photo from my car. 
So I hope that gives you a good idea of the different fuse boxes and fuses that are in the vehicle. If you ever need to look for something that may have a fuse that's blown, you could use this spreadsheet, do a search, and find what you're looking for. And I think it helps having the meaning since a lot of the fuse descriptions are acronyms and hard to understand. So I figured that would help out. That should be about it. I'll have this spreadsheet in the video description. You can download it and have on your own computer or just use the live version. I'll have updated versions uploaded and you'll always have the latest version available in case there's any changes. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.